Welcome to today's digital debate, the situation of the Spanish and Swedish enterprises, impacts of COVID-19 and economic recovery forecasts, with Marta Blanco from POE in Spain and Bettina Kashafi from France 90. Both confederations of enterprises in their countries, moderated by Mike Rosenberg from the SE Business School. My name is Anna Franson, and I am the Managing Director of the Swedish-Spanish Chamber of Commerce in Madrid. And this event is special because we organized this event with the Swedish Chamber in Barcelona, which we are delighted to cooperate with. I want to say thank you to the speakers for making the effort to find time in their schedule in these hectic moments, and to the spectators who are more than ever. We also have the pleasure to have the ambassadors of each country present in this session as spectators. Mr. Teppo Taurainen from the Swedish Embassy of uh, Swedish Embassy in Madrid, and Mr. Gabriel Busquets from the Spanish Embassy in Stockholm. Thank you for assisting. I will now pass the word to my dear colleague, Ella Riazare in Barcelona, who will make a closer presentation of the content in this event. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. It's a pleasure organizing this event together. And good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining us today. As Anna said, my name is Erla Rezare. I'm the Managing Director at the Swedish Chamber of Commerce in Barcelona. And today's debate is about highlighting how the Swedish and the Spanish enterprises have been affected by the current crisis and what prospects lie ahead. We've been answering questions like, how has the COVID-19 crisis affected enterprises? What is the situation of the bilateral trade and commercial relations between the two countries? What innovations have the companies taken to tackle the crisis? And what actions can be taken to strengthen the economy and hopefully come back stronger after the pandemic? If you have questions for the panel, which we really hope that you do, we kindly ask you to use the Q&A button that you see below on the screen. We kindly ask you to not use the chat function for questions and neither the raising the hand. So for all questions that you have, just use the Q&A function. And you can start using that button now if you have any questions and you can do it throughout the whole session. Please also note that this webinar will be recorded and it will be available afterwards on our YouTube channel. So please bear that in mind. And to discuss this interesting subject, we have with us Bettina Kashefi, Chief Economist at the Confederation of Swedish Enterprises, Svensk Nansli, and Marta Blanco, President of the Spanish Confederation of Employers and Industry. COA International. Both Bettina and Marta have long careers within the public SOE as economists and, exp and experts in different areas. They have both very long curriculum, so unfortunately we can't go through it all today. So I'll just give a really brief introduction of both of them before I handing over to Professor Mike Rosenberg, who will be our moderator today. So Bettina Kashefi, Chief Economist at Sense Science Lead, former chief economist at Swedish Association of Municipalities and Region. Bettina has also long experience of working within the Swedish government ministries, including state secretary at the Ministry of Employment, state secretary at the Ministry of Social Affairs, as well as head of secretary at the Ministry of Finance. Hi, Bettina. Hi, hello there. Thank you for inviting me. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. And then we have Marta Blanco, president of COE International and COE Tourism, Culture and Sport. She has a well a long career and experience of working within the public sector. Before her current position, she has been working as a general director of Tour Spain at the Ministry of Industry, Energy and Tourism, head of cabinet at Secretary of State for External Trade, deputy director at the Inter-American Development Bank in Washington, DC, and Deputy Director for External Depth and Deputy Director of the European Union Trade Policy. Hi, Marta. Hello, my best regards from Madrid. So thank you both for being here with us, with us today. We're very happy to have both of you here to discuss this, uh, the Spanish and the Swedish enterprises, how they have been affected by the current situation. I will now hand over to Professor Mike Rosenberg, who will be moderating today's debate. Mike Rosenberg is professor of the practice of management in the strategic management department of ES Business School, where he lectures of strategy, geopolitics, and sustainability in ES MBA's programs. 
<laughs> Mike has also written several books on strategy, sustainability, and geopolitics. And in addition to his academic work, Mike consults leading international companies on topics relating to scenario planning, sustainability, and managing global firms in light of the increasingly complex geopolitical situation as we're facing in many parts of the world. Hi, Mike. Thank you, Arella. Thanks very much for having me on the, on the program today. Thank you. And now, please, the floor is yours. Well, thanks. And, and hello, everybody. This is uh, Mike Rosenberg. I'm a professor of uh, strategy at ESA Business School. As you know, we are uh, based in Barcelona and also in Madrid. We also have campuses in other parts of the world. Uh, we do not have a campus in Sweden, at least uh, not the last time I checked. But anyway, um, I'm actually broadcasting from my house. We have been uh, we've been home for a while. The school's opening up on June 15th, but uh, we're still we're still most of us are still working from home. Um, ladies, uh, welcome, welcome today. And before we get started into this whole issue of SARS-CoV-2 uh, or the virus or we're, and, you know, whatever you want to call the current emergency, maybe we could just focus on, on the relationship between Spain and Sweden. You know, what is the nature of that economic relationship? How close are the two countries uh, from your point of view? And, and maybe we can start with Marta. Marta, what, what's the history of, of Sweden and Spain? <laughs> Mark, I think you're still on mute. No, yeah. There you are. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, and it's, uh, I'm very happy to be here today to share with you our, our views on the pandemic and also on the bilateral uh, relations between Spain and, and, and Sweden. Um, uh, regarding uh, the bilateral relations, I think uh, they, are, they are healthy. Uh, this is a good word for for today <laughs> under the current circumstances and uh, uh, it's a relationship uh, which uh, has a, a, a high potential i would say um, we have a long tradition uh, uh, not in vain both countries belong to the european union and what we see from the coe the spanish confederation for industries and employers is that there is an increasing number of uh, companies in both uh, uh, sides, uh, Spanish companies in Sweden and the uh, Swedish companies in, in Spain. And there is also an increasing bilateral trade. Uh, last year in 2019, uh, more than 5,000 uh, million euros uh, uh, were made in, in terms of bilateral trade. It is true that there is a deficit from the Spanish side, but it is an increasing uh, uh, number uh, and, in, and an increasing uh, uh, flows of, of bilateral trade. Uh, Martha, I think 5, that, million would be 5 billion for, yes, for most of us. Right? That's, the, that's the Spanish yes. way of, yeah, okay. Yes, 5 billion euros. It's a lot of euros, okay. Thank yes, you. yes, and increasing. Exports uh, increased by 8.8% and imports from Sweden increased by 7.7%. So in, in relative terms, uh, it is increasing and that's good news. And uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of sectors, I think there are some sectors which are very interesting for Spanish companies in, in Sweden. Let's mention housing, for instance, infrastructure, high-speed railway, environment, uh, communication and information technologies, e-health and uh, biomedicine and also agri-food. So there are some uh, sectors which have very high potential for our Spanish companies. But, but um, I would uh, like uh, also to mention that there is a high percentage of Swedish population which goes to Spain every year. 20% uh, of the population goes to, to Spain. So that means that they, they, there are uh, uh, or there is a great change in terms of uh, social uh, and economic uh, point of, of view. Uh, Marta, let me get to, can I, is that 20% of the Swedish tourists come to Spain? Tourists uh, in ter uh, for, for or, tourism or 20 reason, of the whole and also labor issues, not only. So 20% of Swedes come yes. to Spain every year. That's yes. a lot. That's yes. a lot. Yeah. That, that's a lot. That's a lot. So that oh. means that there is a great uh, exchange of uh, of, of, of uh, experiences uh, among um, uh, the two countries. And uh, finally, I would like to, to say that uh, the role of high-level visits 
between our both countries uh, is very important. Uh, and also the role that both embassies, uh, the Spanish embassy in Sweden and the Swedish embassy in Spain, uh, in terms of uh, preparing uh, those high level visits because they encourage uh, the, the economic and uh, the uh, trade uh, relationship between our both uh, countries. So uh, I would say that uh, we have uh, 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 a sound uh, bilateral relationship, but there is a great potential. And what I hope is that in the coming months, uh, there will be uh, more high level visits uh, and there will be an, uh, an increase in, in our bilateral relation. Thank you, Martha. Bettina, uh, so I think Martha's painted a little bit the current situation and the situation of Spanish companies in, in, in Sweden. How, how does Spain, how does the Swedes see Spain? And how long has this relationship been going on? Let me start with saying Spain is very important to me, since I'm married to a sort of a Spanish guy. A sort of a Spanish guy, okay. Uh, and Shut a up. particular hello to Mr. Busquet, who know uh, are your Spanish ambassador in Stockholm, a dear friend. Well, I have been looking about, uh, on trade, uh, both goods and services uh, and the relations between uh, Spain and Sweden. And of course, it is very, very important. But one detail I noticed when at the financial crisis, uh, uh, I see that and we know that Spain was hit very hard. And then I see a very sharp drop in um, exports to Spain. As Marta pointed out, there are several different groups of, of, uh, of uh, goods that we export to Spain, not the least vehicles, which is very important, and paper and wood and medicine and steel and so forth. Uh, imports from, uh, from uh, Sweden is hardware, quite a lot of hardware and fruit and wine. Of course, fruit and wine from Spain, we love it and also chemicals. If we look at the service sector, uh, Marta is so right. I mean, did you know that Barcelona is the Swedes most common uh, uh, destination for weekend trips? And Gran Canaria is the most popular destination for charter trips for Swedes. So we see very clearly that that Spain is so so important for Sweden. Thank you so much. And when, yeah, yeah, let me just also point out and also it seems as if Spanish students love Sweden because we have quite a few students in within the Erasmus program in Sweden. Okay, fantastic. So coming back to the current crisis because Sweden and Spain have taken very very different paths. You know, Spain uh, in in the coming coming you know just after the the outbreak in Italy. Uh, President Sanchez basically uh, invoked uh, emergency uh, laws, shut down the country. Uh, Sweden took a very, very different path and, and, and more or less did not shut down the country, um, encouraged people to have social distance uh, to some degree. I guess, I guess Swedes are naturally a little bit more distant than Spanish anyway in the way they, they yeah. talk to each other. But how has that been, uh, let's stick with you for a minute, Bettina, how has that experience been for Sweden? Is, has it been effective? And and could you comment on, on what those steps were and, and to what degree they worked? I think we should be very careful with commenting how, how it uh, sort of the, the, the results because we don't see it uh, yet. I mean, but what, what I see is 45,000 cases in Sweden and about yeah. uh, under 5,000, 4,700 deaths or so. Yeah, well, according we to their latest figures. Upon the co contamination, yes, you're so right. and, and um, our biggest problem probably has been that it has been uh, uh, the, the contamination has entered the old uh, age homes and that has been a, a real horror for Sweden when it comes to the, to the virus. On the other hand, if you look upon, I mean, restrictions and, and uh, cont you see a very big difference between contractions in, in um, mobility between Sweden, we are two extremes. We have the lowest uh, contraction, almost the lowest, whereas Spain has the highest contraction of mobility when it comes to both retail and, and recreation, but also going to your workplace. So in the long run, we of course will see the results, but of course, if 
I mean, look at, uh, upon the economics, we'll return to that, but, but that yeah. is a big difference, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Marta, maybe you can comment a little bit for, for people tuning in from Stockholm. I think everyone living in Madrid and, and other, and other parts of Spain have, have experienced this thing firsthand, but maybe you can talk a little bit about the emergency um, procedures implemented and, and, and how they've been effective. I, I, I just checked the data just now, and I think there was 138 uh, new cases today, which, so we've gone way up the spike and way back down the spike. And then at least in the town I live in, we're now in phase two, which means that the bars and the restaurants are open to limited seating, the people are out in the streets and we can do sports all day. So I, I don't know, what's, what's your sense yes. of, of the measures taken and, and if they've worked? Yes, well, uh, we are uh, partly phase two and phase three, uh, both of the 50% of the territory in Spain is under five two and the, the rest of Spain is under five three, which means that there is an asymmetric uh, and lockdown. But anyway, I mean, uh, I think our country has been one of the most affected in, in, in the world, that is for sure. And uh, we, we have managed the situation under the state of alarm. Um, uh, instrument uh, which uh, has allowed the government to take decisions on on a on a, a united uh, way and uh, also has allowed the government to restrict mobility uh, because uh, the restrictions in terms of mobility have been very severe severe in, in, in Spain, uh, I think uh, uh, only comparable with those in Italy and, and China. Uh, so the result has been a, a control of the, of the virus, uh, that is uh, for sure. Uh, we, 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 we think that now the, 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 the virus is an, under control, but we need to be on alert. But uh, having said that, what we have ahead is a big challenge because we need to unlock down the economy. So uh, we have been under very severe restrictions with no mobility at all among provinces. Uh, so with only essential economic activities in place. So what we have to do now is to unlock the economy and that is a big challenge. So Marta, I mean, according to the numbers, I think Spain is uh, in terms of number of cases, the sixth in the world with just under 242,000 cases, about 27,000 or 28,000 uh, fatalities. You know, it's been a real big impact in Spain. I think the hospitals were at 150, 200% in some parts of the country. And, 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 and yes, these three months have, of, of lockdown has controlled the virus, but from an economic perspective, you know, what has been the impact? I remember reading the IMF projected an 8% drop uh, in the Spanish GDP. Um, and of course, you used to be involved in tourism and, and tourism, I think uh, President Sanchez has, has said, tourists, please come on starting July 1st, mm -hmm. you know, but a, a friend of mine here in town owns a restaurant, you know, he's, he's trying to figure out when he can open and if he should open and how he can make money if he does open. What do you think is the impact of this whole measures to control the virus is going to have on the Spanish economy and, and do you think the, um, you know, how bad is it going to be? Yeah. Okay. I mean, from July the first, I mean, the activity uh, uh, will be uh, will will be open. All all the the, the restaurants uh, that you you mentioned and and everything, and also there will be mobility. But what is important, I think, to to see is why uh, the, the 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 crisis has been so intense in Spain. Uh, there is an an estimation from uh, COE that there will be a decrease in GDP in twenty. 20, uh, about 10.2% uh, of, of GDP. Uh, there will be uh, um, uh, almost 5.9% um, of increase um, according with our estimations, uh, GDP increase in 2021. Anyway, a very high impact. Um, um, maybe there are some uh, issues which have um, made this impact so high. Uh, let's say tourism, you have mentioned tourism, 12.3% uh, of our GDP in Spain uh, is, uh, is, is tourism, uh, so that is a, a very high uh, percentage. Uh, also, we have to think of uh, our uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, uh, the preponderance of the small and medium-sized enterprises in Spain. Uh, it is another uh, factor uh, which can explain the big impact on our economy. Uh, and, and 
and, and the reason I mentioned before, the strict uh, lockdown of our economy. Uh, so what we uh, mm -hmm. need right now is to, to, to have the, the, the support from government and from uh, the, the public sector. Uh, we, we, we consider that there have been two measures uh, which have been uh, very positive for our companies. Uh, first of all, is the financing, the loan guarantees uh, managed by our national bank, ECO, uh, the uh, official credit uh, institution, uh, from a total amount of uh, 100 billion Euro, euros. Uh, so that has been a very important measure because it, can, it, it, it went directly uh, to the companies. And there is a second one, which is the, flexibili the flexibilization of employment in terms of uh, layoff, uh, temporary uh, schemes. Uh, so what we, we think is that uh, those two measures will help our companies to overcome the uh, liquidity problems. But what we expect is uh, more support in terms of financial uh, uh, support from ECO and also the flexibilization of employment, uh, the layoff uh, temporary uh, schemes. So yes, a big impact because of those reasons and uh, measures needed to overcome the liquidity problems that our companies are facing, facing since the beginning of the crisis. Wow. So, so Bettina, in Sweden, with this very different approach to, the, to, to reacting to the virus, has the economic impact been much, much, much less? Because minus 10 percent, that's, that's a lot. Yes, it has been less. It has definitely been less. But to be on the safe side, we don't know yet. But I have a very recent forecast uh, that I'm actually going to present after tomorrow. So this is a top secret. We have I, won't, I won't tell anybody <laughs> and neither will the 60 people watching the program. <laughs> Our estimate is that we will drop uh, approximately around uh, 6% uh, this year. Um, and that differs from uh, our last forecast, uh, actually. But also we see that most of the world is opening up now. Um, and we're in almost every country you study, you see the worst period is behind us. April was the worst month. So now we see an opening up all over the world. So we, we uh, my forecast is a growth of uh, a bit more than 3% for 2021. And well, that, that's, that's my next question, Bettina. Will, the, will this thing have an impact like a V that we're going to go down, whether it's 6% or 6.2% and then go bounce back up? Will it be like an L that we go down and we stay down? Or will it be kind of something like a W or something in between where we go down and up and go down and up? And what, What's your view? Uh, my view is that it's going to be a V, but the right side of the V, if you look upon the V, it's going to slowly, gradually reach uh, the level of the other side of the V. That means that this crisis is going, to, is going to be quite prolonged. Our estimate is that we will be back on the pre-crisis level, not before the beginning of 2023. So more like the Nike swoosh. Like a what? Like the Nike <laughs> swoosh, the Nike, the Nike symbol, which goes down and then kind of goes back up. Exactly, exactly. And that is a much deeper and a much longer crisis than we had, than we saw uh, on the financial crisis. Yeah, Marta, how do you see this thing coming out? Is it going to be a V, the Nike swoosh, or, <laughs> or, you know, I lived through the financial crisis here in Spain uh, from 2009. That was more like an L. You know, it took a long time to see the, to see the, the uptick. Yeah. Well, first of all, our fundamentals in economic terms, I think, are, are, are sound right now. Uh, there is a difference uh, between now and, and the, 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 the past crisis. But anyway, I mean, the V or, or, or whatever will depend on some points. I mean, first, our ability to preserve the uh, productive tissue, uh, the, our business tissue, uh, during this uh, I, think you say, I think you say the industrial fabric. Yes, the industrial fabric, but also the the the, the tourism industry, for instance, not only the fabrics. So, so how 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 uh, our it, it will depend on our ability 
to uh, help our companies uh, to, 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 to survive. Uh, to keep, keep the this, hotels from closing, for example, yes, to keep the restaurants open. Yes, during these months. And there, there are some sectors which are very effective, uh, effective such as uh, tourism, hospitality, transport, retail, and some others. So we need to preserve uh, the, 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 the companies uh, in, in, in that uh, regard. And then uh, the V or some other letter will depend on our ability to identify our strengths and to transform those strengths into drivers for their recovery. I mean, that we have a very competitive uh, companies in Spain in, in many sectors, such as energy, infrastructure, construction, financial services, telecommunications, industry. So what we, uh, we, we want is those companies, because they are, very, um, uh, given that they are very competitive, we want these companies to mobilize investment and uh, generate employment. So depending on those both abilities, the first one to preserve the, 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 the business act, uh, companies, the companies in Spain, and second, to identify those strengths and to mobilize resources in, 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 in terms of investment, we will see a V or some other uh, um, uh, uh, recovery in our economy. That's Fantastic. my, now, my view. Uh, sticking with you just for a minute, Marta, you know, as, as we think about the new normal, as we think about coming out of this thing, whether it takes one year, two years, or three years, you know, and, and, and you know, we've been doing lots of uh, webinars on this. Everybody's reading what they can. Everybody's talking about this. And then there's, there's one theme, which is about uh, globalization might be, might be wounded, that we might see a drop in world trade that uh, we might lose more aspects of our privacy as the government imposes more uh, traceability. You know, there's kind of kind of the dark clouds for the future, but at the same time, um, you know, we've, we've made huge strides in digitalization in the last few months, which might've taken five or 10 years in terms of working from home, in terms of applying AI to a whole bunch of problems. Um, and, the, and the climate and the air quality is amazing. You know, the, 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 we can actually see the mountains in some parts of the world uh, breathe the air. We have pigeons in my town, which we never had before. You know, so so that there's another just kind of a ray of sunshine, which is maybe this thing is actually going to work out for the good, and people are going to say, I don't need to drive to work every day. Um, I like clean air. I like I like some of the aspects of this new normal, and and that's a good thing. How do you see this this combination of of optimism or pessimism, and 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 maybe what role does innovation, business innovation, play in 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 in, in making the best of this? Yeah, well, um, I mean, you're right in the sense that there will be some uh, changes uh, caused by the crisis. And what we need is to take advantage of those changes uh, in order to uh, transform the, the economy, in order to guarantee the, the, the recovery. So um, uh, you have mentioned uh, some drivers uh, uh, for the recovery of the economy. Uh, a more uh, digitalized economy is one of them. So we need to digitalize our economy, but, but both in public and private sectors. Uh, we need to fill the gap, the digital gap in our economy. So that is uh, another area to invest in. And uh, then uh, the, the, the research and development activities uh, uh, for uh, the benefit of the competitiveness of our economy is another opportunity. Uh, so we need to take advantage of that opportunity. And the energy transition, we, we, we have uh, very competitive companies once, once again in terms of uh, uh, energy and uh, the, the objectives uh, for the neutrality, the, the decarbonization of our economy. So uh, once again, those are opportunities that we can take, uh, take advantage of. And um, uh, in terms of globalization, uh, I mean, you're right that uh, there are some clouds in the horizon, but uh, we need uh, global responses. We need global answers. So we need globalization more than ever. And we need the globalization more than ever because this is a pandemic uh, crisis. Uh, this is something that is happening at the same time, but at different level in, 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 in all the world. So we need to deal with this situation on a global 
uh, on global terms. So in, in, in that sense, I see that globalization and multilateralism, not only in trade, but also in, in health and, and some other aspects will be uh, very important. So we defend uh, multilateralism and globalization in the coming future. And finally, there is another opportunity, training and education. Training and education is another opportunity and you know perfectly what I am talking about uh, because uh, we, we will need to identify new, new skills from uh, our workers. So we need to invest in training and education also. Well, as, as a business school professor, I'm all with investing in education. <laughs> uh, but Dina, what, what, what do you think? Are the, is it going to be the dark clouds or the sunshine? And, and what do you think that... Um, you know, individuals, businesses, and governments ought to do to make sure we get more sunshine and less clouds? It depends on how we continue handling the crisis. And I certainly do agree with Marta. If we do not help the most profitable companies to survive, then I mean, there, there will be no places to go back to when we are opening up more vastly. So I think that is very, very important. And also we must reduce the decline in employment and uh, hinder unemployment. And of course, a measure for that is, of course, education, training. Uh, so, so that is very, very important. And uh, looking upon what is happening um, in Sweden, there, it, it is a big risk that uh, the support we have for short term work and, and uh, reduced labor costs and so forth, um, uh, that that those um, so that support is for too short a period. So that is very important, and I think that if if the workplaces are still there when we come out of on the other side of this crisis, then I think we can boost um, growth so much quicker than if they weren't there. And I think that unemployment, in particular among vulnerable groups is going to be a very, very difficult problem, at least in Sweden and, I, and I'm sure in Spain as well. Well, on, on that issue of unemployment and, 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 and specific groups, I mean, one of the things that have clearly emerged through this crisis is, is how, how inequality shows up in, in moments so, of stress, you know? So, you know, I, I feel that me and my family were blessed in the sense that, that uh, Nobody too close to us got sick. We live in a house with a garden. We have plenty of food and plenty of Wi-Fi, and we don't have small children to take care of. You know, which which small children are a blessing, but in in this crisis, it's been a lot of work because um, they can't go to school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, has this crisis made inequality worse in Sweden, Bettina? De Definitely, in the sense when you look at job losses and the sectors that are affected by this crisis, it's definitely the service sector, hotels and restaurants, transport sector and retail. And those are sectors where usually you have uh, 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 immigrants uh, uh, taking on those works as, as stepstone jobs. So when they enter the labor market, it's usually in those sectors that are mostly affected with this crisis. So, so it is very scary uh, what is going to happen there. So in that sense, yes, it has affected uh, groups that are further from the labor market worse. Yes. Now, Marta, I'd like your opinion on the same question. Before that, I'd just like to remind the, the attendees, please type your questions in the question space. I have a bunch of my own questions because this has been fascinating. So we'll continue. We have about 20 more minutes with uh, Bettina and Martha. But if you have a question, please feel free to type it into the uh, open question space so we can see your questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Martha, on the issue of inequality, has, has this crisis widened the, the gap in Spain? Or, or do you think that the Spanish polity has been more or less uh, solid solidarity in the, in the face of the crisis? Well, well, you have mentioned a, a very important word, solidarity. Uh, I think uh, there, there, there are many issues uh, that have uh, showed up. Uh, one is um, the inequality, for instance, in terms of digital gap. I mean, that's for sure. Uh, but also uh, solidarity is, uh, is, an, is another thing. And uh, I would like to, to say that uh, Spanish companies have, have demonstrated a 
very high level of solidarity since the beginning of the crisis, uh, uh, mm, providing uh, the society with uh, solutions uh, in terms of uh, medical equipment and devices and, and so on. So I think that's, that's something uh, important. But the debate on inequalities after the crisis or during or after the crisis is very important. There is a, a debate in the multilateral institutions about how to tackle that inequality uh, uh, getting out of the crisis. And uh, uh, I would like to give you an example of one sector that can contribute to deal with the inequality, to reduce inequality, which is tourism. Tourism has a very high potential to, uh, to uh, guarantee a social, environmental, and a economic um, uh, sustainability. Uh, in the territories uh, because it has a, a big uh, potential to uh, spread the, the positive uh, uh, benefits uh, of this uh, activity. Uh, so uh, I would uh, encourage to, to, to think of uh, tourism as a driver uh, to, to reduce the, the inequality because tourism arrives to every territory in, in, in the countries to every uh, social class, uh, also in terms of uh, gender, uh, in terms of um, uh, diversity and so on. So let's think of uh, tourism in that sense. But once again, uh, to reduce inequality, we need to invest in companies. To in, to, 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 we need to, uh, uh, to help uh, those companies which are very competitive because they create employment and the creation of employment is the big way to reduce inequalities in, in a country. So yeah, that's my Mark, positive. On, on that question, I mean, you, you mentioned that Spain has some strengths and that the government should, should, should support those strengths and use those strengths to help grow our way out of the crisis. Will the EU allow Spain and Sweden to, to do what it needs to do, to, to use this policy space to support this industry or that industry? Or will the EU guys come along and say, no, no, excuse me, that's against the rules? <laughs> well, I think, I mean, uh, the European Union is part of the solution. That is for sure. I mean, uh, we we will hope uh, the European Union will 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 have a relevant role in the over uh, to overcome the crisis, and uh, there will be a stronger European Union after the crisis uh, because uh, it's uh, 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 in the benefit of every country to have a stronger uh, European Union. Uh, think of uh, the internal market. We need the internal market. Uh, our own economies need the internal market to generate growth and employment. So we need more European Union. We need to reinforce our internal market and then to reinforce also to our relations with third countries. So what we need is more uh, a more united European Union and uh, a strong answer and response of the European Union in terms of our recovery fund, for instance. <laughs> Medina, how do you see the role of the EU in, 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 in guaranteeing a recovery? And I don't know if you want to talk about it, but there's this whole issue of the Green New Deal and, and that the recovery money should be spent on, on greening Europe at the same time as bringing it out of, out of this, this mess. Yeah, I think that that should be, we should continue working on that. And I think EU is part of the solution uh, uh, post-crisis, definitely. And uh, I certainly agree that the internal market has to be restored. It hasn't worked perfect uh, during this crisis, in mm. particular, not in the beginning. And I think that that, that is what we have to to sort of restore. And then I hope that our, our policymakers will be able to get a deal that is so important on the long-term budget of the EU. And also that we can settle um, realistic uh, sort of rules around uh, uh, new resources uh, concerning the union. I mean, it would be nice just as a starting point to agree on when to open the borders because it's, it's a little bit confusing, yeah. at least for the common common person to figure out when they can go here or there, because it seems that every country is, is opening what is opening when it's opening. And, and there does not seem to be a lot of coordination. At least that's my perception as a citizen. I think you guys have a slightly more nuanced view of it. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. 
I certainly do agree. And you have new constellations with countries that accept each other and, uh, and make exceptions for other countries. For example, as a Swede, I'm not allowed to go to Denmark, but the Danish are allowed to come to us. And, and it, 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 it it's would, confusing, isn't it? Yeah, it is very confusing. And I think there are agreements between some Northern European countries and Australia. So all over the world you are finding now clusters, new clusters, and that, that, that should, I think, we could expect more from the EU. Um, Marta, I mean, I mean clearly there's, a, there's a, a health issue which has to be where it has to be, but there's just a coordination issue here, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think a coordination uh, response is uh, necessary, but I mean, I think uh, not only as a citizen, but also um, uh, companies uh, uh, have uh, problems in terms of uh, mobility and in terms of restrictions uh, because uh, they lack of information about where they can go and uh, 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 which countries are closed or, or open. So what we need is a coordinated response, that is for sure, but also we need information. Uh, uh, I, and in, in this regard, uh, uh, I know that the Spanish ambassador is right here listening to us and th there has been a, a, an initiative from the Spanish Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, about uh, mobility for companies, uh, providing information about the restrictions in every country. I think that that's going to be very useful uh, because, I mean, the pandemic is uh, performing I mean, I mean, in a different way. In concrete terms, if I wanted to send a truck full of Spanish wine to Stockholm today, it won't yeah. get past the border, right? I mean, it's or can, or can the truck get through? Yeah, yes, but what, what, what I mean is that there will be an asymmetry in the performance of the crisis that what we didn't need is uh, uh, information to, to, to overcome those uh, restrictions and think of, uh, not only in terms of export, but also in terms of uh, professional mobility. For instance, to make uh, certifications, that's important. If you want to export something, you need people to certificate your product and that people, those people are not in your country, are in a third country and they have to come to Spain to certify that product that you have to that you you want to export sure. for instance so there are uh, many uh, problems concerning uh, exports and and and, and investment uh, 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 related to mobility so this is a, a challenge uh, for uh, for everybody so uh, we need to 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 act on a coordinated manner as as, as you mentioned both of you uh, uh, before that's very important in terms of the European Union we need a coordinated response and we need coordinated uh, uh, actions uh, uh, to, 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 to be taken. Okay, uh, and one more one more issue, which maybe to, to close kind of on a higher note, the um, on a specific level, can each of you think of an example of a company which has done something amazing, some kind of crazy, innovative approach, you know, to, to get through this thing and, and, and how and, and just think talk a little bit about the role that innovation is going to play in, in getting us getting us to where we need to go. I don't know, Bettina. Do you have an example of some cool innovations in Sweden, which which is worth uh, worth closing on, or or if not, uh, don't worry. Uh, yes, I have a, I have a good example of someone doing something really good. You know, there were so many people laid off from the the air company SAS, Scandinavian Airlines. And the cabin staff, they were, were retrained by a, a guy who has a company, a Wallenberg company. Uh, they were retrained together with the private hospital to go into the healthcare sector and the elderly care sector. And they did it within two or three days. They just retrained the staff. And I think Fantastic. that was brilliant. Because Fantastic. there are so many people working so few hours uh, today because uh, several sectors are down and we have this short term work, whereas many people work more than full time. So I think that is a brilliant ex example. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Marta, do you have a good example? Yes, Next, I mean. One last question which has come in through the, from the audience. Yes, there are some examples. I mean, uh, at the beginning of the crisis, uh, some uh, companies uh, from the automotive sector uh, began to produce uh, face masks, for instance. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, in, in just a 
a couple of hours. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that was amazing right. uh, because uh, I mean the fabric was was uh, locked and, and, and they began to 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 fabric those uh, face masks. You know? So uh, there are some there are many examples in in, in Spain. So uh, Spanish companies are very creative. <laughs> oh, so maybe maybe just to close because we're supposed to close in a couple of minutes. Maybe I can ask each one of you what your thinking is about the other country in terms of how they've gotten through the crisis and what's next for them. Because I think both of you have done a wonderful job of explaining, you know, a Spanish, Spain needs to do this, 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 and this is where Spain has been. And, and I think, Bettina, we have a question from uh, Jessica. Um, you know, what's the opinion in Spain when speaking about the Swedish strategy and vice versa? So maybe uh, to, to, kind of, to kind of close this thing down, um, Bettina, what's your view of Spain and what's your, what's your outlook for Spain? And how do you think Spain's gonna gonna go through this? And then I'll ask Mark the same question about Sweden. I cross my fingers that the strategy is correct and that you can you can safeguard the opening up and boost the business and see to it that we get Spanish wine and fruit as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the Swedish wine isn't very good, right? Is that the, is that the... <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> it's good as well. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And, and Marta, what's your view of Sweden? No, I think I, I, I think that problems uh, for citizens, uh, governments, and companies are very similar in in everywhere. And uh, what I think is that everyone has made uh, the best <laughs> to overcome the difficulties. Uh, so I trust uh, government, citizens and companies. I think everybody, uh, or everyone uh, wants to collaborate in order to overcome this uh, ter terrible si situation. And uh, what I hope is that uh, Swedish uh, people trust uh, Spain. Uh, I think uh, we, we are ready uh, to, to receive uh, people from Sweden this uh, coming summer. Uh, we are waiting for, for them. We have uh, been working very hard in terms of uh, uh, having guidelines uh, for a safe tourism. Uh, so what we expect is that uh, Swedish people uh, will come to, to Spain as they used to do. <laughs> uh, Bettina, the president of the COE International, um, Sorry, Marta, President of the COE International, Bettina, Chief Economist for the, for the Swedish uh, manufacturers. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Anna, I'm going to give it back to you. I think, uh, I think uh, our panelists have been amazing. And uh, it's, been a, it's just been a pleasure to be here with you today. Yes, I really agree. They have a, had us all on tension because when you're sharing secrets which are not published yet, it's really interesting. <laughs> so thank you very much for, uh, for a very inspiring and uh, prosperous message that you, that you send to us all now. I, I, this situation is very serious, but uh, there is a prosperous future. So thank you very much for your contributions today. Thank you, Marta Blanco from COA in Spain, Bettina Kasafi from Svensk Nainsliv, and moderator Mike Rosenberg from ESA Business School. I thank you all, spectators, for joining us, and I wish you a nice afternoon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.